This segment is brought to you by Musamed Gateway Private Hospital. Although atrial fibrillation can feel weird and frightening, an attack of AF usually doesn't have harmful consequences by itself. The real danger is the increased risk for stroke. Even when symptoms are not noticeable, AF can increase a person's risk for stroke and related heart problems. We speak to Dr. Vezi for more information. Dr. Vezi, thank you for joining us on Living Your Best Life. You're welcome and thank you for coming. So today we're going to talk about atrial fibrillation. But before we go any further, can you explain what that is? Well, simply put, it's a disease of the aging where you have these abnormal electrical activities that take over the normal function of a pacemaker. You do know that every living being, animal and human beings have got pacemakers. And that's a reason why you don't feel your heartbeat. As soon as you are aware of your heartbeat, it means that your pacemakers have stopped functioning. Now, one of the most common causes of such a condition is called atrial fibrillation, also known as AF or AFib. It's a disease of the aging, looking at about 65 years of age, probably find about 2 to 5 percent of people have it. By the time they are octogenarians in their 80s, up to 20-25% of people have atrial fibrillation. How would you know that you are suffering with this condition? Unfortunately, the most common symptom is fatigue, which is really non-specific. These are very nebulous symptoms. Fatigue, shortness of breath, lassitude, um, sometimes not sleeping well, um, maybe the symptoms suggestive of atrial fibrillation. Unfortunately, a lot of patients put it down to aging. If one is lucky, they get an awareness of the heartbeat, which we call palpitation. And if you're 65 and above, or an endurance athlete, you have to make sure that you check because it could be atrial fibrillation. Obviously, the most devastating symptom for the first time could be a stroke, cerebrovascular accident, CVA, a stroke. That's the bad news with atrial fibrillation, it can cause a stroke. Why is treatment important? And if it's left untreated, what are some of the possibilities? Well, probably uh, right off the bat, the most important thing, as I've said, is one can get a stroke, which is most debilitating. A lot of people would rather die than having their diapers changed by their spouses, by their family member. So it's a massive, massive thing. Not only that it costs health a lot of money, but as an individual, you lose your self-respect, your self-control, mobility, and your quality of life is done. So number one is stroke. Left untreated, because the heart is so erratic and so fast, it does cause heart failure, what we term tachycardia-induced heart failure. Tachycardia is a fancy name that doctor says when the heart goes fast, beyond 100 beats per minute. As you're sitting now, your heart rate is probably, depending on your age and your level of fitness, Maybe around 65, 75, but should be below 100. Lastly, um, sudden death. So these patients can just die suddenly uh, because of atrial fibrillation. So, and obviously it's not an exhaustive list, but if you just summarize the stroke, heart failure and sudden death. So those, those are major, major complications of AF. Let's look at some of the treatments available to the patients now. Um, surprisingly, if AF is an incidental finding, we leave it alone. So the major push in terms of treatment is quality of life. Okay. To my patients, I always draw a parallel between the two. One is how can, as a physician, reduce your risk of stroke? Reducing your risk of stroke is I'm going to look at other conditions that you may have that included with heart failure, with atrial fibrillation, will increase your risk of heart failure, i.e if you've had diabetes or hypertension, previous stroke, therefore you will need blood thinners for the rest of your life. Now, we give blood thinners to reduce the risk of stroke and nothing else. Blood thinners do not make patients feel any worse or better. But in my opinion, probably the most important thing. Number two is we look at the reason why you're in my office today. That means that you are aware that something is wrong. Now, those treatment options have nothing to do whether you're in a blood thinner or not. It's extremely important for us to understand those are two parts that we follow. So now, to address your symptoms, 
there are drugs available that we give to patients. Broadly, these are the drugs that reduce your heart rate and or put it back to normal rhythm. There are classes of drugs. The most common one would be pizza blockers. So a lot of patients who have some sort of cardiovascular condition would have been exposed or head of a pizza blocker. The other option beyond drugs will be doing a procedure. We don't call it surgery, a procedure um, that goes into the heart and try and correct these abnormal uh, firing cells that give atrial fibrillation. We call that procedure an ablation, A-B-L-A-T-I-O-N, an ablation. So ablation is the best option available over and above the drugs. Say for whatever reason, because we use surrogates, it's not everyone is a good candidate to have an ablation. If someone has an already damaged heart from a prolonged exposure to atrial fibrillation, let's say someone has AF for about a year or two untreated, they are no longer a candidate for an ablation. In those subset of patients, there is a third option available. We said drugs, ablation, or a pacemaker. So those are the three major options we have in terms of management of, of uh, AF. Doctor, at the end of this sort of treatments, are patients likely to lead a normal life? Well, the whole purpose of doing this procedure is really not to prolong their life. We would like that to be, but it's driven primarily by the quality of life. So the short answer is yes. So we do these procedures or treatment, uh, other forms of treatment like pacemaker, uh, for the patients to go back to their normal lives. But it's extremely important, once again, for those who are under 65 and are involved in endurance athletes, uh, that they are at risk of developing atrial fibrillation if they go back to do things like marathons, ultra marathons, because we know that in younger individuals, if they go back and do that kind of exercise again, they are more likely to have a recurrence of atrial fibrillation. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Musamed Gateway Private Hospital, the first purpose-built surgical and cardiac hospital in KZN. Visit musamed.co.za. Musamed, premium care, personal touch.